Howdy YouTube, Matt back with part three where we're gonna finish up the fabrication of our three-point hitch adapter for a standard two-inch trailer receiver. What I have to do this time is I have to fabricate the top of this whole thing. There's a bracket needed, you know, about here or so that attaches to what's called the top link on the three-point hitch, that's point number three. So we need a vertical riser from the draw tube up to the bracket. Uh, we need the bracket. And then I want some diagonal bracing to go from that bracket down here to the corners just to triangulate the whole thing and make it good and strong. I suppose I owe you an apology. I did this part without you. Um, but it's nothing complicated. I cut out two and a half inch long pieces of the same two inch wide flat stock that the end caps of the lower part are made of. And I just welded them together in a, a simple U shape and drilled the same holes that I drilled in here because the top link pin is the same size as the rest of the, the category one stuff. I did hit the outside corners of this with the, the grinder and the flap disc just because you're gonna be getting your fingers up against here. Likewise, the top corners of this are a little bit rounded over. It, needs more work, which I will do with the flap disc when I get it ready for paint. The $50,000 question here is, what am I gonna use to get this thing up where it needs to go? My original plan was to use the cutoff piece of receiver tube that I took off the back of here, but the problem is it's not tall enough. I'm copying the dimensions for the three-point attachment points from an existing implement from the back blade that I have for plowing snow. And this is only about half the height that I really need. This thing is supposed to be more, more like up here. Since I had such good luck fabricating channel out of two pieces of angle, I thought, why not fabricate some square tube? So here are two 13 inch long lengths of angle that have had the ends polished and the edges all the way around here have been ground to a bit of a bevel and cleaned up. What that should allow us to do is take these two pieces and put them together to form a one inch square tube. That we can then weld to the top of here and we can put the bracket up there. And the beauty of this is that I'll be able to arrange it so that you know, I could put the bottom of the square tube on top of the receiver pretty much wherever I want, as long as I can still get the wire in there to weld. And then this, in theory, should be centered on here, but it doesn't exactly have to be. I think it's more important that I get all these holes in the right straight line. So let's bust out the welder and let's turn these two pieces of angle into a square. And we'll then stick it on top of here and we'll stick this on top of here and we will be in a place where we at least have all of the components of this contraption where they're supposed to be. One 13 inch long, one inch square, one eighth wall thickness, square tube constructed out of the angle we had laying around. And it is tacked at the corners onto this big old hunk of iron down here. The same drill applies for f welding this out uh, fully the whole way around as when we attached to, to this. This hasn't gotten any thinner in the meantime, so I'm gonna to have to get the map gas torch. I'm going to have to preheat the receiver tube. Otherwise, I'm gonna either melt through this or just have a weld that looks okay but actually doesn't have any adhesion or penetration to the, the thick stuff. The other thing that I did is I ground a place with a grinder for the electrical ground of the welder right on the receiver tube. What I want is for the best electrical path to be through the thick metal so that most of the heat goes that way. So I'll preheat, 
I'll have my circuit set up to favor the receiver tube. And obviously while I'm welding, I'm gonna spend most of my time with the wire pointed at the receiver tube and just flick up to catch this thing once on, uh, on every, every little back and forth. I suppose you have heard the expression trying to make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. At the moment, I think a sow's ear would be an upgrade from where I'm starting. Uh, the reality is that that 90 amp flux core welder is really, really struggling, uh, even with the map gas preheat, to do anything effective with this much metal. That, that quarter inch thick steel is just a real bear. Um, and running multi-pass welding on anything using flux core is a nightmare because you have to stop and clean it up in between each pass. Nevertheless, uh, this, I think, I think is pretty, pretty sturdy. Now, again, we won't know till we get it on the hydraulics of the tractor and the weight of a trailer and put some real stress on it. But what can I tell you? Uh, if it breaks, I may have to break down and, and go get myself either an oxyacetylene or a, a stick rig so I can do this with a little more oomph. But for now, that's what we have. The top bracket is going to be a whole lot simpler because everything is 1 8 inch steel. The welder is going to have a whole lot better time dealing with this than it does with the quarter inch down here. I have the magnets in place to make sure that this thing is square to the vertical post. I used the magnets to make sure this was square down here so that all the forces should kind of go where they're supposed to go. Um, I will tack it here and here, front and back, uh, and then I'll get the magnets out of here so they don't mess up my arc. The one minor little challenge that I'm going to have is that obviously these welds are, um, you know, they're more horizontal than they are flat. I'm going to have to get the, get the torch up, up in there and trying to get good penetration on this top piece is going to require that the heat go up, uh, but that's okay. That's the direction heat wants to go anyway, right? Got the top piece all welded on here. It uh, looks an awful lot like the bottom, except that the welds are a lot, a lot cleaner. I did do two pass welds up here. I had beveled enough of a gap on the top of my square tube um, that I took one pass mostly just to fill it in. And then I had a perfect surface, you know, once I wire brushed all the flux off to go back and lay another, a wider bead that tied the two things together. So I'm pretty happy with that. I went ahead and I cut these diagonal pieces to run from corner to corner. I just uh, held these up here, marked them with a Sharpie, and cut them off with the angle grinder. So nothing to see there. And likewise, the ends are all, all polished up. They're ready to be welded. C-clamps, holding them tightly in place at the bottom. So I'm going to be able to run around and tack this at the top, tack this at the bottom, take the clamps off, probably take me five or ten minutes to get all of this welded front and back everywhere it needs to be and then this will be done. It's done, fully welded. Well, okay, not done. I still have to spend many a loving hour with the flap discs to get this thing ready for paint. I have BBs everywhere, I have flux everywhere, and um, everywhere includes some places that the flap disc on the grinder won't reach. So we may be into some hand sanding and or some Dremel tool territory. Don't worry, I'm not gonna subject you to that. I have these pins just hand threaded into the ends. I don't want to crank them down until after paint um, because I don't want to work the lock washers any more than I have to. And our top link pin fits nice. It's got, uh, you know, enough slack in there that it'll go in and out without me having to fight with it, even if I have gloves on, but there's still plenty of metal around the thing. So I guess the next step is before I put in all that effort and labor to see about getting it ready for paint, 
we should put it on the tractor and make sure that it's going to fit. She looks pretty solid to me, YouTube. I don't know. Let's see how it handles the lifting action. Looks pretty solid to me. All right, YouTube, it's all painted. It's hooked up to the tractor. We know it's gonna go up and down, but will it work with the boat attached? Let's find out. Looks like it works. Still have to try it with the uh, bigger ball and the bigger trailer, but I didn't hear any creaks, cracks, groans, or other uh, things that make me think I'm gonna have a problem. So file this one away in the success category. I'm gonna be away for a few weeks over the holidays, but I'll be back with more Harbor Freight goodness early in January. Stay safe, YouTube, and have a Merry Christmas.